Tonight, hanging in the balance, the US presidency on a knife edge. We're live to America for the very latest. Also, another major Adelaide event up in the air. Could our biggest tennis tournament head to Melbourne? A victim's family reeling. The man who killed his best mate set to walk free in two and a half years. A Christmas shopping marathon given the green light. Why not? Everyone's on board. Nowhere to go. A last-ditch plea to find a new home for Adelaide's rescued koala population. And Cricket Australia's Big Bash snub for Strikers fans and Adelaide Oval. Live from Adelaide, 7 News with Jane Doyle. Good evening. America has a real election fight unfolding tonight. Donald Trump has sent in the lawyers waging war in at least four states with unfounded claims of widespread fraud and vote rigging. A conservative count has Joe Biden much closer to the magic number of 270 than the president. A 24 hour turnaround. My friends, I'm confident will emerge victorious. Joe Biden edging ahead in his battle to topple the president. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Joe Biden, as we speak right now, is knocking on the door of the White House. But Team Trump still has the key. The president is starting to see this slip away. Sending in his lawyers with an avalanche of cheating and rigging claims. These mail ballots. They could be from Mars as far as we're concerned. Joe Biden could have voted 50 times. This is fraud. This is absolute fraud. We've seen it in Philadelphia before. They're trying to make a mockery of the election of this country. Challenges now in at least four states. Why you have states that are pausing their counts and then starting up their counts again. We love Trump! Camps divided. We tent scenes in Arizona. The poll workers have to be escorted out by uh, armed sheriff's deputies. Trump supporters chant stop the count outside this tallying center. In New York, arrests as Boston and Washington marched. Demanding the count continues. That every vote has to count. The commander in chief hit Twitter, declaring unsupported victories, including Pennsylvania, claims of votes disappearing and surprise ballot dumps. A barrage fact checked and censored by Twitter as misleading. Pouring scorn on the process from inside the White House, but no public appearance. 24 hours after boldly claiming victory, Donald Trump has stayed away from the cameras. His future, his presidency hanging in the balance. Joe Biden has won Michigan. Biden's rebuilt two bricks in his blue wall, flipping Wisconsin and Michigan back to the Democrats and widening his path to victory, Arizona. A military state in part wounded by comments about soldiers and their beloved senator, John McCain. When he called fallen American soldiers losers and suckers, did that resonate with you? Very much so. It changed my vote. He did not take Arizona for granted, and it's why we think we will be victorious there. Biden holds a narrow lead in Nevada too. New data there won't be known for hours. Pennsylvania could be days. Pennsylvania allows uh, votes to respond be received and counted up until Friday, three days after the election. And I don't think uh, anyone's feeling too good about, you know, uh, this possibly going to the Supreme Court. I just don't understand this country at all. Democrats tonight launching the Biden fight fund, still hoping the count will decide before the court. No one's going to take our democracy away from us. Not now, not ever. The unleashing of legal firepower signals Donald Trump's last desperate bid to hang on to his presidency. In America's complicated system, postal votes have emerged as the critical factor, but those doing the counting insist they've done everything by the book. The paper trail that's turned into a legal minefield. Dozens of states, a swag of different rule books, and an election headed for the courts. <laughs> In the middle of a pandemic, more than 100 million voters decided to stay away from the ballot box, opting to cast a postal vote instead. A deluge more than double the early votes cast in the 2016 election. But how they're counted and which ones are eligible varies widely between states. This is a major fraud in our nation. 
So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. Already, the Trump camp has filed lawsuits in three states. In Michigan, claiming Republican observers haven't been given proper access to see ballots being counted. They argue that too in Pennsylvania, plus want a ruling on whether votes received up to three days after the election can be counted. In Georgia, they claim a handful of late absentee votes have been added illegally. Plus, they're demanding a recount in Wisconsin, claiming irregularities. We'll be done as soon as we're done. And and then there's a, there's a winner and there's a, a loser. That's what's going to happen. We're just focused on getting this right. A lot of times court challenges or allegations are thrown around to further political agendas as opposed to actual legal claims. It's insulting to our local election officials uh, to say that any, any, yesterday's election was anything but an incredible success that was a result of years of preparation and meticulously carefully following the law. Flashback to 20 years ago. Al Gore versus George W. Bush. Back then it all went down to the state of Florida. A critical recount and terms like hanging Chad entered the American lexicon. Just 537 votes were in it and a month later Bush's victory was finally confirmed by a Supreme Court ruling. Now it's the Trump camp digging in, chest thumping during a heart-stopping standoff with Joe Biden. Quite possibly we'll do a national lawsuit and really expose the corruption of the Democrat Party. Rolling the dice in a multi-pronged battle to come up Trump as the tide rolls against the Republicans. More challenges in more states are expected with both Republicans and Democrats now asking supporters for donations to fund the upcoming legal fight as this race moves from the ballot box to the courtroom. In Washington DC, Paul Kadak, Seven News. Now let's go to Tim Lester in Joe Biden's camp. And Tim, the stage is still very much set there. Jane, Democrats here were convinced yesterday they would cheer a new president. Of course, a far tighter vote count crueled their party. Well, tonight the Biden billboards are still lit up. So too the stage here and as well Secret Service teams here still have this compound locked down. Now, Nevada might deliver Joe Biden his presidency as early as tomorrow. If not, perhaps Pennsylvania, maybe even Georgia, or maybe he simply never gets it at all. But it is clear the Biden teams here believe they are still going to have their party to cheer a president. Jane? Thanks, Tim. Now back home and Prime Minister Morrison says he has faith in America's democratic process and has called for patience while we wait for the final result. There's uncertainty in the presidential outcome for sure. The race for a vaccine, though, for COVID is moving closer to the finish line. An announcement that goes hand in glove with his health strategy. Eventually. All good. Okay. Two new vaccines. <laughs> I think I may be better at welding. As democracy is put to the test in America. And we'll be patient and we'll await the outcome of their process. Retaining a diplomatic silence on Donald Trump's legal challenges. It's not for me to run a commentary on those things and I won't. Labor leader Anthony Albanese saying every vote must be counted and. Democracy is too important for uh, it to be undermined uh, by, by any individual. But from Australia's former ambassador to Washington... So there's a chance that electoral fraud has happened? Oh, for sure. Backing Mr Trump's right to challenge the result... There's plenty of good reason to have litigation. It doesn't help to have Australians make comments that aren't thought through. Joe Hockey later told Seven News that while he believed voter fraud did occur, he did not believe it was of a scale that would have affected the outcome. Scott Morrison concentrating on vaccines. And as each day passes, we become more optimistic. Deals with Novavax and Pfizer for another 50 million doses, adding to the University of Queensland and AstraZeneca, which starts production in Melbourne next week. These Four vaccines give us over 134 million doses. At a cost of $3.2 billion. Mark Riley, 7 News.
Local health authorities are up against it to prevent another major event from slipping through the net this summer. The successful international tennis tournament at Memorial Drive is under real threat of moving to Melbourne as part of a COVID safety measure. We worked hard to get it, ran it brilliantly in its inaugural year. Now we're fighting just as hard to keep it next year. Seven News understands Tennis Australia has already told its Melbourne staff to prepare for a player hub in January. They might be fearful of international players being trapped in quarantine away from Victoria. Without them, the Grand Slam event would be a shambles. The Australian Open does need to be protected, but um, there's also an appetite from the players to play. Authorities here are serving up a strong case that we're as safe as anywhere in the world. Until it's game, set and match, they're preparing for another big-name tournament here in January. At this stage, we're planning on running the event in Adelaide. We've got confidence in that. We're working with the government. We're working with SA Health. We want to deliver a safe event here in South Australia. That's our goal. That's what we're working for. But Tennis Australia might still decide it's an unacceptable risk. We understand it would be called the Adelaide International in Melbourne. It could round off a bad week for major events here. First the Adelaide 500 went, then next year's Tour Down Under and WOMAD crowds will also be scaled back. So the obvious question, will Adelaide have any major events left this summer and has the government badly misjudged the tough times ahead? We have seen decision after decision that is compromising the tourism outcomes for South Australia which is impacting on local business. Mike Smithson, 7 News. Meantime, the state's coronavirus tally has risen by five, with two men, two women and a teenager testing positive. Health authorities say each of the patients is in hotel quarantine, having recently arrived from overseas. South Australian children in need of cardiac surgery will soon be able to again travel to Melbourne for treatment. Elise Baker joins us now. And Elise, the news comes as restoring surgery here has been formally ruled out. That's right, Jane. The Women's and Children's Health Network Board met today upholding the decision not to do cardiac surgery on children in Adelaide. It was a unanimous decision. They say there simply aren't enough cases here to offer a safe service. It's highly specialised work and medicos need to be in regular practice. But with COVID now under control in Victoria, kids will soon be able to go back to Melbourne. Currently we are still referring to Westmead, New South Wales, um, but we are at a point where uh, we will be able to start referring children back to Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, and that's certainly our intention. That could happen in the next few weeks. As for getting a life-saving ECMO machine here, that's still under consideration, Jane. Thanks, Elise. And aged care residents have begun enjoying the relaxed new rules. They're now allowed an unlimited number of visitors after COVID restrictions were lifted. Loved ones can move freely through nursing homes but must register their details. Over the man. Over the man. Everyone's very excited that now we can get together with our family members, my mother in particular for me. It'll be a much merrier Christmas than first feared. A man who fatally punched a mate, then dumped his body 50 metres from a hospital, will walk free from jail in two and a half years. Despite lying about his involvement, Glenn Patterson was given a substantial sentence discount, leaving his victim's family reeling. A bittersweet embrace after a two and a half year wait for justice they now say will never come. We are extremely disappointed with today's outcome. I sat there and I was just confused. Glenn Kerry Patterson, drug addict, career criminal and killer. He was supposed to be Adrian Trett's friend but in April 2018 after a drug fueled night he punched him in the head at Manham sending him down a flight of stairs. The father of two was dumped 50 metres from a hospital covered in blankets and died 12 days later. This is the moment Seven News confronted Patterson. Did you kill Adrian? Oh, for f sakes mate, no I did not. I did not kill Adrian. I've never killed anyone. He only came clean two years later once he was caught. He's a liar and he's been caught and now, he, now he's getting the discount for it. Today, a judge slashed 30% off Patterson's sentence, citing his early guilty plea. His non-parole period now, just four years and four months. It's shattering. It's bullshit. 
really. In the days following the killing, Patterson laughed that police had failed to notice his swollen hand. The judge said he also threatened a witness to keep their mouth shut. But the final gutless act was still to come. The fact that he came to the funeral makes us absolutely sick. The 51-year-old cried during today's proceedings. He'll walk free in May 2023. Elspeth Hussey, 7 News. There was mayhem at Morfordville when flames erupted in a stable near the race course early this morning. Horses had to be rescued as firefighters battled the blaze. Trainer Jan Taylor raised the alarm at 4.30am when the fire broke out in her neighbour's stable. There was a 10 foot glow of flames. Yes, that's when I panicked and um, rang Triple O. Fearing the flames could spread to her own stable, Jan quickly removed her horses. That's when stable hand Nicole Brown came to the rescue. She was in the middle of the road with her pony trying to find somewhere to put it to get it out of the smoke and so we grabbed it and brought it back to our stables. With the horses safely away from the fire, MFS crews extinguished the blaze. Trainer Leah Conlon's racehorses, including veteran galloper Vieira, are normally stabled there. Well, they normally are, but hers are out in the paddock at the moment, so she's so lucky. But sadly, two budgies died in the blaze. At this stage, investigators can't determine how the fire started, but say the only ignition points could be fluorescent lights inside the stable. Something has caught on fire or combusted and it's just continued and then it's gone into the other box where the hay is and hay burns like anything. Fortunately, no horses were injured. Everyone sort of knows everyone around here, especially in the horse racing industry. It's a tight-knit community. Everyone looks out for each other. The stable's owner is insured. Peter Caldicott, 7 News. A stolen Apple watch has helped police track down three alleged teenaged car thieves. The watch was inside this Jaguar, which was stolen from a house at Unley Park. It's alleged the trio also stole a second Jag from Torrens Park. It was found in a street at Christie's Beach. The teenagers faced the youth court this afternoon. The Adelaide Oval's been snubbed by Cricket Australia as it scrambles to rejig this summer's Big Bash fixture. Let's go now to Theo Deropoulos. And Theo, it's a cruel blow for Strikers fans. Yeah, it really is, Jane. A combination of border restrictions with other states. And the Indian team being in town here means there'll be no Big Bash matches at the Adelaide Oval until after the test. Now, Hobart and Canberra will do the initial heavy lifting with the Strikers playing three matches in Tassie before then making the move to Brisbane for a clash with the Heat at the Gabba. The good news, though, is the crown jewel in Adelaide's Big Bash summer remains untouched. That is, of course, the highly anticipated New Year's Eve clash. That'll still go ahead as one of two matches against the Perth Scorchers and it will be a striker's home game so a blockbuster crowd will be here in full voice. It's hoped the rest of the fixtures will be announced by the end of the month because without the Big Bash here at Adelaide Oval, guys, it's just not cricket. Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, Theo. Now let's check with Soda on what else is coming up in sport. Oh, Jane, remember Brad Crouch? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, he's now a saint. <laughs> um, and Crows footy director Mark Ricciuto has explained why the club didn't match that offer from the Victorian side. And there's also some contract news at Port Adelaide, which is great stuff. Uh, and an emotional goodbye for a South Aussie cricket veteran who had the opportunity to wear the baggy green. He's been a star there for a long, long time. So we'll catch up on that and plenty more shortly. Good day. Thanks, Soda. Ahead on 7 News, a desperate plea to find a new home for Adelaide's injured koalas. Also, over and out, old radio towers come crashing down to make way for progress. The painting set to become the most expensive piece of Australian art. And later, a special consumer report, the surprising surge in used car sales. at six o'clock. A charity that rescues and rehabilitates sick and injured koalas is making an 11th hour plea for a new home. Its current lease is about to expire and it has nowhere to go. 
The team at Adelaide Koala Rescue called Tori their miracle. She was struck by a car and left for dead. We didn't think uh, she was going to make it, but with a lot of time, effort and our amazing vet team, uh, Tori's managed to pull through. Tori and her joey will head back into the wild this weekend, but with warm weather tempting koalas down from trees and onto roads, there will inevitably be more needing treatment. We're coming into the busiest time of the year now, uh, so we would be expecting to need to care for at least 30 koalas uh, at any given time. Last summer, they had 300 at the same time, rescued from the Cuddly Creek bushfire. The state government moved them rent-free into a disused building at Campbelltown, but the deal is about to run out. They're hoping to find a property that can house a vet clinic, but has enough open space to give their furry patients lots of tree time. You've got to be out of bushfire zones um, because that's, you, you know, you don't want your hospital threatened by a bushfire. You've got to be accessible to koalas from everywhere from down south to the northern areas. A permanent home will let Adelaide Koala Rescue keep growing. It will be able to build bigger enclosures to help even more animals. This operation, it's essential that it continues, so we're asking for, for some help in finding us somewhere to move to. They have until November the 30th. Lauren Rose, 7 News. Hurricane Etta has been downgraded to a tropical storm as it cuts a deadly path through Central America and heads towards the US East Coast. The slow moving system made landfall in Nicaragua as a Category 4 hurricane, causing widespread destruction and sparking fears of severe flooding. At least one person was killed when it moved to Honduras. Experts say the storm could gather strength later in the week and possibly threaten Florida. They stood for 80 years, but it took just seconds to bring down four old radio towers in Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. One by one, the towers crashed down to earth after quick, controlled explosions. The old towers are making way for a new housing subdivision. As the battle for the White House continues, the year's most unlikely presidential candidate has quietly conceded defeat. Kanye West has bowed out of the race after he voted for the first time in his life, but says he plans to contest the 2024 election. The rapper only made it onto the ballot in a handful of states due to a combination of missed deadlines and a lack of signatures. What's destined to become the most expensive piece of Australian art has been revealed in Melbourne. Brett Whiteley's Henry's Armchair is set to fetch up to $7 million. The masterpiece will be shipped to Sydney and auctioned later this month. After yet another cool and mostly grey day here in Adelaide, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Let's go to Amelia, who's at Norlunga Downs tonight. And Amelia, the good news is the weekend's looking up. <laughs> Jane, this cloud is set to clear. We'll eventually lose these cool southerly winds and that means the temperatures on the rise this weekend. That's good news for the 15th annual Onka Stomper fishing competition that's held every year here at Perry's Bend. You don't have to be a pro to take part either. Everyone's welcome and it's not too late. You just need to register on the morning. That's a donation to the Childhood Cancer Association with the event being the organisation's biggest community fund. Fundraiser. So a great cause and a good excuse to cast a line as well. Tonight, though, we are in for another cool one and tomorrow's not looking much warmer than today. I'll be back with a look at the full forecast a little later. Jane. Thanks, Amelia. Still to come on 7 News, cricketer Usman Khawaja's brother sentenced for framing a love rival. Also, how Australian research is tackling a disease which means almost certain death to sufferers. Still ahead, the surge in used car sales is now the time to trade in yours. And open for business, Adelaide's set to shop around the clock for Christmas. The brother of cricket star Usman Khawaja has been jailed for more than two years for devising a terror plot to frame an innocent man. In a fit of jealousy, Arsalan Khawaja destroyed his colleague's life with a twisted scheme the judge slammed as unforgivable. He might have been driven by dangerous delusions, but Arsalan Khawaja knew his lies would see his colleague accused of terror and locked up. Is there anything he wants to say to Mr Nizamdeen? One word, sorry. Not enough, according to the sentencing judge. For this unforgivable behaviour, he deserves appropriate punishment. 
Forging a Terra notebook in August 2018 wasn't the worst of it, but the fortnight of lies to police afterward meant Cayman Nizamdeen was kept in Supermax. It took handwriting experts four weeks to tell police they had the wrong guy. He's been living with the consequences of his actions every day. All because Kawaja wrongly believed Nizamdeen was dating a woman who had previously rejected him. Facing a 10-year maximum, jailed for four and a half, still, his surroundings are nothing compared to what his victim endured in segregation. The offender's actions have caused an innocent man to be incarcerated in a maximum security jail. Mr Nizamdeen has gone back to Sri Lanka now where he still suffers flashbacks, accused of plotting terror against the country that he worked in and wanted to live in permanently. He can't go to America where his fiancée lives now because his tourist visa there was cancelled after all this. Diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, when released next June, Kawaja has agreed to continue treatment. Evan Batten, 7 News. It's known as the new devil's dust, and being diagnosed with silicosis has almost always been a death sentence. But now Australian researchers have come up with a treatment that could prove a lifesaver. Tony Constantine has been a stonemason for almost four decades. Big deep breath there. He was diagnosed with silicosis 12 months ago. I was shocked. I didn't think I had it. No, it was a bit of a shock. The deadly lung disease is caused by the inhalation of silica dust, mainly from the cutting of manufactured stone. When they say you've got silicosis, you think, oh, that's a death sentence, you know. Professor Dan Chambers from Brisbane's Prince Charles Hospital felt compelled to help. Their sons, their brothers, their uncles, their um, fathers and uh, you know my heart went out to them. Researchers discovered a procedure called a lung lavage would remove the tiny particles of silica. We're literally drowning the lung so we're washing it out much like the rinse cycle on your on your washing machine. So far they've treated six patients. Prior to the whole lung lavage we would have seen about as four times as many crystals and many more cells with the dark material. There are now new healthy cells for those in the early stages of silicosis, this treatment is potentially a cure. It's given me hope. So the research continues, with scientists now studying contaminated cells extracted from patients. To do that, they need funding. So far, the Common Good, a hospital charity that raises money by selling strawberry sundaes, has bankrolled the project. But they need another $5 million to continue and are hoping the affected industries will get on board. We're very hopeful for the future, but the thing that will frustrate us is not being able to attract enough support to make sure we can get this thing done properly. Bianca Stone, 7 News. Shoppers are being given the chance to shop till they drop this Christmas, with extended holiday trading hours kicking in later this month. But while some retailers are praising it as a godsend, not everyone's on board. Festive season has hit the city and with it a chance to shop around the clock. We're really excited that Rundle Mall has got the opportunity to have extra trading hours for Black Friday and through the Christmas season. Stores will be able to open until midnight on Black Friday. We'll also have an extra two hours every Sunday morning. And if they want to, shops can open for 45 hours straight in the lead up to the big day. I think it's fantastic. I really do. I just started a new job and my hours are all over the place, so if things are open for longer, it'd be much better. For Rundle Mall's Nike store, the extra foot traffic will provide a much-needed boost after a difficult 12 months. Can't tell you how important it is, really. It's the difference between whether we can capitalise on this year and make uh, get a result out of 2020 or not, I think. The government's hoping it'll inject millions into the state's retail sector. It's absolutely critical that our retailers are given the maximum opportunity to be able to maximise their sales during this particular period. But not everyone's on board with the holiday trading plan. Thousands of retail workers have written to the state government asking for public holiday penalty rates to be applied on Boxing Day. And to think that retail workers can be forced to work the day after Christmas without public holiday penalty rates is shameful. Because Boxing Day's on a Saturday this year, we're getting the following Monday off when workers will get paid extra. Extra. Rosie Barnett, 7 News. Still to come on 7 News, police investigate the freak deaths of an elderly couple in their own home elevator. Also, why shock lewd videos have been shown at the Craig McLaughlin trial. Explosive claims billionaire James Packer isn't fit to hold a casino licence. And the new study that has health experts worried about toddler milk products. 
An elderly couple has died after an elevator malfunctioned in their North Queensland home. The man and woman, both in their 80s, were apparently thrown from the lift onto a concrete floor. They suffered head injuries and were taken to Townsville University Hospital, where they later died. Police are investigating. Actor Craig McLaughlin has been confronted with videos he made of himself performing sex acts. They were played in court where he's facing charges of indecently assaulting his co-stars. Craig McLaughlin caught with his pants down. In video shown to the court, the actor is on the toilet with his jeans around his ankles. He sent them to one of the women he's accused of indecently assaulting, but claims it was just toilet humour. There is a story behind it in the context of jokes she initiated. A further video depicted the 55-year-old simulating a sex act. The star of the Rocky Horror Stage Show gave evidence the footage was part of an ongoing exchange of text messages with one of his female colleagues, a woman he previously described as the most vulgar individual he'd ever encountered, while labelling his own actions as comedic. The prosecution called him out. You have a standard for her and a standard for yourself. You say she is vulgar and you are not. McLaughlin said, no, I don't agree with that. The Logie winner appeared red faced His voice wavered as he was asked to describe what he was doing in each of the videos. Fortunately for him, the footage won't be released publicly. Facing 13 charges, his defence will close their case tomorrow. Jade Vincent, 7 News. The future of Sydney's new Crown Casino is under a cloud, with the New South Wales Premier saying she's willing to hold it up if that's the advice she's given. The concerns stem from an inquiry that's raised questions about James Packer's influence over the Crown Board. We submit that it can clearly be said that Mr Packer had a profound level of power and influence over the affairs of Crown Resorts, both while on and off the board. The inquiries heard recommendations that Packer be banned from any close association with the new casino and that Crown operations be suspended nationally. The past year has had its share of surprises and now it's led to a surge in demand for used cars. With fewer new vehicle imports, the time could be right to cash in. Don't miss that story ahead on 7 News. Parents have been warned powdered milk formula could be harming their children. A new report has found they're expensive, high in sugar and low in nutrients. It's videos like these on social media that have health experts worried. As a doctor, I'm very concerned that products are being aggressively marketed to young children that are less healthy, more expensive and putting kids at risk. Companies are using Instagram influencers to promote toddler milks to Australian families. But doctors say the products are unnecessary and could be harming their children. Regular milk is more healthy and lower cost. It has higher protein and higher calcium. Researchers looked at 50 toddler milks and found some had up to 8 grams more sugar than fresh milk, adding up to 60 extra teaspoons of sugar a month. Some milks marketed to one-year-olds are four times more expensive than regular milk, an extra $23 per month. It's really worrying to see manufacturers using sneaky tactics to promote toddler milks and foods to Australian families. Unlike baby formula, health claims about toddler milk products are unregulated in Australia. Health groups are calling on the federal government to set higher labelling and marketing standards. The money that you save by not buying these products, spend it instead on fresh fruit and vegetables. Melina Cyrus, 7 News. Good advice. Now it's time for sport and so did Brad Crouch, that bloke that you were asking if I still yeah, remembered. Yeah. <laughs> he and the Crows have uh, had a bit of a pot shot at each other. Well, yeah, I think, look, uh, time's done. He's uh, ready to go. He's probably having a few rounds of golf before he leaves and he's relaxing. He's going to turn into a St Kilda player and Crows need to just justify their behaviour. Also coming up, a trio of Port Adelaide young guns set to put pen to paper on contract extensions. One of the Redbacks' grades calls time on a 16-year career and Adelaide's first taste as State of Origin ends in an upset win. Hello again. Well, Crows football director Mark Ricciuto has said the risk wasn't worth the reward when explaining why the club didn't match St Kilda's offer to Brad Crouch. The Brownlow medalist also said that no other club had any interest in the midfielder. 
It's the question every Crows fan is asking. Why didn't the club match the Saints' offer? The list management committee didn't think the risk was worth the reward in the end. You would have Brad Crouch wanting to not want to be at Adelaide on a a five-year deal and the Crows uh, not wanting Brad in Adelaide on a five-year deal. The Saints had all the power and were prepared to let Crouch walk, confident he wasn't in danger of signing elsewhere. We had a look around to see if any other clubs were interested, if that did happen, and to see if you could trade Brad to another club and... and, um that wasn't the case. As the Crows saw it, either take pick 26 or end up with nothing. Crouch spoke today for the first time as a Saint, revealing a desire for success was the motivating factor, not the lure of returning home. I see a, a very bright future at St Kilda. Um, and, you know, I think they suit the way I play and, and they're, they're going the right way. They're a very young side as well. Um, they've got a very, very bright future. So I'd say that's probably over overriding thing. And Kyle Hardigan is now officially a hawk with the Crows receiving a future fourth round pick. Seven News can reveal Port Adelaide is expected to soon announce contract extensions for young guns Mitch Georgiades, Miles Bergman and Dylan Williams. Negotiations to get Orazio Fantasia on board are ongoing. The power has squashed any ideas of trading its key players including Xavier Dersma, Connor Rosie and Zach Butters. And West Adelaide junior Will Snelling has signed on with the Bombers for next season. Andrew Hayes, 7 News. Well, it's the end of an era in South Australian cricket with Callum Ferguson bidding an emotional farewell to the Sheffield Shield. He'll put on the whites for one last time in Sunday's match with Queensland. Clutching the two baggy red caps he wore during his 16 years in SA Colours, Ferguson will no doubt go down as one of South Australia's best. A really tough decision to make. Uh, I absolutely love playing with this group of players. At 35, um, you know, my dream of playing for the country is probably probably gone. Well, I was thinking that when I was making the decision. Um, and now it is gone. With wife Rhiannon, daughter Layla and dad Jim watching on, Ferguson reflected on his incredible career. Baby faced when given an SA debut in 2004, 19 centuries since, and reaching the pinnacle, baggy green 445 in the now infamous Hobart Test of 2016. An emotional Ferguson touched on the one thing that's eluded him. I'm going to break out here, break down, but um, I just want us to win one. We just need to win a shield. But it's not a full Redbacks declaration. Ferg will continue playing one-day cricket in the new year. You know, I'd love to see us win a one-day title. Um, You know, there's it's been a while between drinks for us. You know, he'll go down as one one of the greats of South Australian cricket. Theodoropoulos, Seven News. Queensland is celebrating an upset win over New South Wales in last night's NRL Origin opener at Adelaide Oval. Josh Adokar crossed for the Blues, but it was his premiership teammate Cameron Munster who had the last laugh. He's inside the 20. Cook is chasing Munster. Munster, yes! There's a lot of hunger in that group and um, they really proved the point tonight. Um, No one really gave us a chance tonight and uh, we just dug deep and yeah. Origin 2 will be held next Wednesday night at Sydney's ANZ Stadium. Adelaide United's pre-season got off to a perfect start, beating local side Adelaide Blue Eagles 2-0. The Reds fielded a line-up full of youth with a former Bundesliga defender put his hand up to be United's next signing. With seven out the door and four new arrivals, Carl Viet was happy with what he saw from his young side. First half was good. We got a little bit sloppy at times, but um, for a first... um Hit out for the season, I'm more than happy. Cassini Yangi made the most of his chance up front, while George Timothy impressed on debut at the back. This crossfield switch helping to set up Motore's late goal. The former Bundesliga centre-back is on trial with the Reds, and Seven News understands he's expected to sign a permanent deal. You know, you don't play in the German Bundesliga if, um, unless you've got some quality, and he has quite quality. You know, he's a little bit behind with his, um, with his fitness. But, um, yeah, I'm very impressed with George so far. United will be back in action next Tuesday night against Parra Hills. And in the Champions League, Manchester United's horrid run of form continued as the Red Devils were stunned 2-1 by Turkish minnows, Istanbul Bashak Shahir. Lucas Ronaldo, 7 News. 
Well, a place in the $3.5 million golden slipper is up for grabs at Rose Hill on Saturday. The winner of the million dollar golden gift will earn a start in the slipper in March. Team Snowden's impressive debut winner, Cap Devant, is the favourite. The attitude that he's got, it's just so good. Um, certainly can't train that in, in these horses and, and he's just got it. See the Golden Gift live on 7 on Saturday. Uh, Jane, that's our sport. Congratulations to Callum Ferguson, mm. a lovely young man too. What about looking at him when he was on debut at 20? He looked about 14 like he, he came did. out of high school. Indeed. He's mm. earned his place in the annals of cricket history in South Australia. Absolutely. Now to your money, and the markets have responded positively despite US election uncertainty. The ASX 200 closed the day 78 points stronger. Among the market movers, Afterpay, always volatile, leapt $2.50 higher and Flight Centre gained 89 cents. The Aussie dollar is trading at 72 US cents and $1.07 New Zealand. Stay with us after the break. Is now the best time to sell your car? The surprising surge in second-hand sales. And we're set to gradually warm up over the weekend with temperatures in the low 30s expected early next week. I'll be back with all the details in the full forecast live from Nolunga Downs after the break. Our expert team Local has news every angle. happens seven days a week. The most trusted, the Sorry, most experienced. Adelaide years. turns to Seven News. There's never been a better time to sell your car, with the average price of used vehicles reaching record highs. People are avoiding public transport and many have extra cash in their pockets, driving up prices. With the COVID pandemic closing overseas car production facilities for months, new car stock has stalled, pushing used vehicle prices through the roof. Over the last few months, the customers and the sales have actually doubled. Also driving demand and price hikes in second-hand models, money in the bank. During the pandemic, I've been able to save up a bit and I'm just looking for around a 10-year-old car, like an SUV. Support package that Scott Morrison provided, we actually found that we sold a lot of cars around the $10,000 mark. Prices of used vehicles grew almost 30% in September compared with the same month last year. But lately, unprecedented rises, up 3.8% just last week and a 4.2% rise in the previous week. Well, SUVs and dual cab utilities in Australia are both high sellers. What we're also finding is trade-in prices are increasing too. Used Toyota Hiaces are up by 7.8% on average, Holden Commodore by 98 Toyota Corolla up 2.5% with a 2006 model selling for an amazing $4,500. New vehicle prices dropped by 20% this year, but with industry reports of green shoots in the new car market, the rise prices of used cars is not likely to last long. Helen Wellings, 7 News. Now to one of the cutest new additions at Sydney's Taronga Zoo. Three-month-old seal pup Amelie has taken the plunge into the deep pool for her first official big girl swim. She finally built up the courage to conquer the water with some help, of course, from mum. She's growing well for three months too. Now, time for the weather. Amelia, we've got another cool night ahead. We do, Jane, although it isn't keeping the fish away. One of the guys here just brought in a 94 centimetre mulloway. Now, we're seeing these crisp conditions with southerly winds at play today. They've reached up to 25 knots about the metro coastline. So these keen anglers here tonight have found a nice little spot at Perry's Bend by the Onca Paringa. They're also taking part in Sunday's Onca Stomper fishing competition, which starts here at 7am and raises money for the Childhood Cancer Association. Right now, here in Norlunga, it's 14 degrees. And in the city, well, we topped 19 today, but it came after a cool start. Our low was 7.6 just before 6am. Now, despite the cloud, well, we didn't see much in the way of rain today, aside from the odd light shower about the Mount Lofty Ranges this morning, as a high-pressure system directs cool onshore winds in our direction. It'll slowly head east, ending up over the Tasman Sea by the end of the weekend. For now, it's keeping Perth warm, up to 27 degrees there. And after rain today, calmer in Brisbane, Sydney and Canberra tomorrow. 
tomorrow. Back home, it's looking sunny and a little warmer across our far north. It'll be a cool start further south and that could lead to frost patches and there's still a chance of showers about southern coast and the lower southeast. So Mount Gambia could see a shower or two. 15's the top there. 17 for Victor Harbour, Nuriotba and Port Lincoln. 22 for Renmark and Port Augusta. In the city, down to 8 degrees overnight. Some cloud will remain and these southerlies will stick around too. 18's the top. To boating, south westerly winds will reach 15 knots around midday, becoming southerly in the afternoon with seas to one and a half metres. And to fishing, well, there have been reports of kingfish up to a metre and a half in the regions, or you can come here and try for brim in the Onca Paringa for Sunday's Onca Stomper competition. Looking ahead, and things are looking up. Cloud clearing Saturday, then a sunny Sunday up to 26. 32 is the top Monday, 33 Tuesday ahead of a change, and that one looks like it could deliver a thunderstorm, Jane. Some good news there. Thanks, Amelia. That's all the news we have till now. I'll have updates through the evening. The latest tonight is at 10.30. From all the Adelaide 7 team here at Hindmarsh, though, for now, good night.